Hi everyone, it's Casey Williams. I don't dream about cars very often, but when I do dream about cars, it's probably going to be a Mercedes-Benz of some kind. And one of the cars I remember dreaming about, we drove a 1969 280 SE Cabriolet at a Mercedes press event. I went to bed that night and literally woke up knowing that I'd had a dream about that car. It was just beautiful, the way the car handled, the way it rode, the softness of the suspension, everything about it. But for almost 40 years after that car, Mercedes didn't build an S-Class Cabriolet. And it was really a shame. They had the E-Class and that was a nice car, but they really needed that big, full-size, four-seat at least, Cabriolet. And they've got one back, the S560 Cabriolet behind me. Let's go have a look at it. I think when most people think about a Mercedes convertible, they think about the SL Roadster or the little or SLK Roadster, the little two-seat convertibles. But for me, I think the most beautiful Mercedes convertible is the S560. I mean, just look at it. It's a huge car, but I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. The curves, the lines, everything about it. And it really starts in the front. In the traditional grille with the single lamella, the big emblem in the middle, the Mercedes Benz emblem up above, just as it should be. And the headlamps, all LEDs, Swarovski crystals actually in the headlamp design. Absolutely stunning and beautiful. Just absolutely glistens at night too. And you look close and see some of the traditional details, the twin hood bulges that come from the original 300 SL Gullwing. You come around the side, and you know, as with some of the other Mercedes products, they've really cleaned up the design. There really aren't any lines that don't need to be there. Just nice, nice creases right here, just gives a little muscular look to it, and just absolutely beautiful. And the way the line kind of falls back to the back again, almost like a yacht. 19 inch alloy wheels, AMG style wheels, I think look beautiful there. In the top, I mean, it's just absolutely tight. You know, it looks like it was made for Rolls Royce or Bentley. I like it in blue. I like the bluish gray color down below as well. I think it's a nice combination on the car. But it just looks hunkered down over its wheels. You know, the car that I was dreaming of, the 1969 280, you know, that was a much more Baroque, much more traditional Mercedes. Had the stand-up hood ornament, had the big chrome grille. But I think for the sportier look of this car, I think it works much better. Come around the back, again, nothing but elegance. Where the tail lamps come around, all LEDs, deckless spoiler built right in, chrome, twin exhaust outlets, again, all of it just looks very, very nice. The trunk's a little bit small. You're gonna get a couple of duffel bags in there, that's about it. So you gotta make room for the top to fold in. But that's all right, it's a convertible and you've gotta understand that. Well, back in the old days, a 560 would have implied the car had a 5.6 liter V8. Well, that's not what this 560 has. This is actually a four liter bi-turbo V8 and it delivers 463 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. That is plenty of power, especially when routed through a nine-speed automatic transmission. This car does not have four matic, it's just rear drive which is absolutely fine unless you live in an area where you get lots of snow all the time. But you know, the nice thing is the power just goes to the rear wheels and launches forward, feels very nice. This car does have auto stop start, so it pauses the engine at a rest to save fuel economy. And this car actually does pretty well for a very large convertible. It gets 17 miles per gallon in the city, 26 miles per gallon on the highway. And I think, you know, again, for a car this big, that's pretty respectable. Well, clearly Mercedes design and technology has come a long way since that 69 280SE that I love so much. And look at the interior. I think the interior is really one of the most beautiful interiors ever put in a Mercedes Benz. I love the flowing look on the front, the stitch, leather. It's just stitched up here. You know, the two colors with the brown top and the beige. I think it's very classy, very elegant. It's just very beautiful. And you look close, you know, the piano finished wood, lacquered wood. It's there. It's over here on the doors, it's on the console. Again, it looks very expensive. You can change that wood type if you want. You can select different woods. But I think that looks very nice in this car. I like the round air vents that swivel. Turn them on and off with the switches here, little organ pulls, very nice. So then one level below, you've got all the climate controls here. Here in the center, the buttons. It, you know, the infotainment system is really controlled with this, this wheel here and also with touch. Um, but you've got your massaging seat button here, goes in the controls, massage your seats. And you can massage those seats in about any way you'd want to. You know, control your heat functions and stuff here as well. Navigation, the radio, media controls for your, for your iPod. You can do that, telephone. And down here, um, it's got the air suspension on the car, their aromatic suspension. So you can adjust that here. You can raise the car up if you're needing to clear, clear some obstacles, you got a little bit of snow, or maybe going, going into a grass field to watch a soccer game or something, you can raise the suspension up a little bit. Um, the dynamic button here, this changes the throttle, changes the steering, it changes the suspension setting from sport to comfort to echo. So that, that kind of helps your driving there as well. And you can adjust this, you know, if you're on the road, you know, with that nice heavy flow that you used to have in a Mercedes, put it on comfort. If you want to sport it up a little bit, hit the sport button. 
So I think that's very nice. So anyway, I think all these controls work out very well for the car. And here in the center console, this is really clever. You can open it from either side. There from the driver's side, there from the passenger side. And then inside, um, the power roof controls are all right here. One, one lever up, everything's automatic. Um, one button to raise all four windows in here as well. Very easy to use that. Um, it has a power, power rear air deflector, which is very nice. And there's also wireless phone charging in here too. So you can put your cell phone in here, charge it wirelessly as you go down the road. So some of the safety equipment on this car, quite a bit actually. And, and it's a pretty high-tech thing. You know, start with the heads-up display, which I think is really nice, keeps your eyes focused above. I like the uh, dash layout, it's very easy. The big screen here for infotainment, another flat screen here in front of you for, for the speedometer and for your tachometer. And also I've got it set for the navigation on my side of the instrument cluster too. But some of the other advanced technology in this car, of course it has the forward collision alert system, forward collision crash mitigation system that will auto-brake auto -break the car if it needs to. It's got adaptive cruise control, keeps a safe distance on the highway. It's got lane keep assist, it's got blind spot warning, rear cross path detection, all the things you'd really expect on a, on a new modern high-end car. Um, but some other things this car has, it has a lane centering system. So when you're in the adaptive cruise control mode on the highway, it'll keep the car centered in the lane. It won't let you take the wheels off, take your hands off the wheel. It'll, it'll beep and buzz and it'll require you to keep your hands on the wheel. But you can just very loosely, barely grip the wheel and the car will just center itself It'll even center itself through curves. It's very nice. Um, it's also got an emergency feature. So if you're, if you're changing lanes very quickly, it'll go ahead and kind of overboost the steering, and it'll help you center it in the lane as you bring it across. I think it's a very, very nice feature as well. So overall, you know, it's, it's, it's a high-end car, and it's got everything you expect. But I think Mercedes has done a fantastic job of really making this a beautiful car, very elegant, very classy, and it's just a wonderful way to travel. Well, that bike turbo V8 really just steps right out and moves the car along. I mean, you're driving, you know, a very full-size luxury car with a convertible top, you know, makes it a little bit heavier. But, you know, 463 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque. It's not the most powerful S-Class, but it's plenty to move this car. Uh, we spent four hours in the interstate this weekend. Um, I had my daughter in the back, and I'll, and I'll tell you that the back seat's not the roomiest. You know, this car's really, really kind of a two-passenger plus car, not a four, full four-passenger traveling vehicle. But... Yeah, it's got enough space. So we're on the highway. You kick down at whatever speed you want to kick down at. It's plenty of power. And, you know, the car is just absolutely bred around the Autobahn at any speed you want to. You move into the left lane at speeds that are not legal and step on the throttle. It just sets you back in the seat. And what's really cool is, you know, you expect a Corvette. You expect a sports car to accelerate. You don't expect something this big to accelerate like it does. You can just, you can, you know, it's not a sports car, but you can just throttle it like a sports car and just moves. And it just reaffirms all the time, this car is just designed to carry two to four people very luxuriously at very high speeds for very long distances if you need to. And, and it's just an absolute delight. But, you know, when you're on the highway too, the things you really start noticing is it's just a beautifully crafted car. You know, all the stitching, it just feels expensive, the wood on the steering wheel, the wood on the dashboard. You've got the Burmester audio system, which just sounds absolutely delightful. You just crank it up and you swear you're in a concert hall. And, and the whole time you're driving this car, it just constantly reaffirms that you know it's quite it's quite expensive car but it you know, if you can afford it I think it's probably worth it you just absolutely enjoy driving it put the top down you know some other things that this car has in it you know this has air vents right here the Mercedes air scarf system so you know in the fall when the air is a little cool you just want to have the top down enjoy the weather you can do that turn on the heated seats you turn on the neck warmers and it's just absolutely cozy as can be in here and it's just again hours on end just enjoy driving the car and the fuel economy not, not that you'd be worried if you can afford this car but 26 miles per gallon in this car on the highway is actually really really decent and just surprisingly so so you know the thing I think about this car is too is how nice would it be to own this car how nice would it be to keep this car for a very long time and the things that keep coming back to me is you know I was out at the Mercedes Classic Center in Irvine California a few years ago and they had a 280 SE being restored at the time and the thing they were mentioning, they said, you know, it's a complex car to restore. And the thing that goes through my mind now is, yeah, well, that car didn't have an air suspension system on it like this one does, doesn't have the crash avoidance systems, doesn't have twin flat screens, you know, or it doesn't have twin turbos on it. So I think, you know, long term, this car may be really complex to maintain. And if you kept it a long time, you'd probably start getting bills at some point that look like you're servicing a Learjet. But I think, if you, again, if you can afford this car and you want to keep it, this is an epically classic car, and it's always going to be so and 
a couple of people that drive it, and just absolutely delight to drive. It took Mercedes over four decades to replace the S-Class Cabriolet, but boy did they. They took the spirit of the old 280 SE and just brought it forward to the modern times and created a car that's just high-tech, beautiful, luxurious, and absolutely elegant way to travel. And they built a car that's really a credible competitor for a Bentley Continental, and they've done it at a much lower price than, than even that car is. And when you really consider that the 280s, especially a 280 3.5 with the V8 engine, those cars in meticulous condition are pushing a quarter million dollars now. This car is also kind of a relative bargain. So let's talk about price. Well, the base price for it is $133,300. This one as equipped, $154,595. So when you put it in perspective of a Bentley or even a classic Mercedes, it's not a horrible deal. And I guarantee you, you're not going to have a more comfortable, more, more luxurious, just more enjoyable way to travel than this car with the top down. Well, next week we'll have another fun car. And until then, storm forward.